Hello and welcome. My name is Craig and you are listening to Too Ugly for Radio, official podcast of the USSR. Today we're going to be taking a look at the much-loved Thomas the Tank Engine, one of my most cherished childhood memories, and I'm going to reveal the dark, messed-up history behind it and one guy's problem with its clouds. <laughs> oh boy, I am about to ruin a big part of my childhood. Recently there's been a weird revival of one episode in particular. It seems as if all of a sudden this episode's on the forefront of society's collective consciousness. That's right, I'm talking about Henry's Tunnel. I'm sure some of you have seen posts online about it, and for those of you who are not familiar, I'll give you a brief recap. Henry was pulling a train full of passengers one day when it started raining. Then, worried that the rain would spoil his new coat of paint, Henry entered a tunnel and refused to leave. Alright, I'm going to stop right there. Partially because a plane's flying above and I don't want to get it in my audio. Now, I'm no painter, but I'm pretty sure water won't ruin your paint job. Unless a fat controller's been cutting corners and sent out his trains in water-based paint, in which case, yes, rain would act like a paint stripper on those poor trains. Or maybe it's a brand new coat of paint, and if that's the case, then why the hell is he out and about? Give that shit a day to dry, at least. Maybe two. The fat controller shouldn't mind, he seems to have new trains coming out of the woodwork. So anyway, back to the story. When Henry refuses to move, things escalate quickly. All the passengers try to pull him out of the tunnel. And when that doesn't work, the fat controller, whose full name, by the way, is Sir Topham Hat, gives Henry an ultimatum. Get out of the tunnel, or we'll brick you in. This is where Henry makes a serious lapse in judgment. Don't ever try to call Mr. Hat on his bluff. He is a certified madman. And so making good on his word, Sir Topham bricks Henry into the tunnel. Why Henry didn't decide to run is beyond me. He just stood there and watched it happen. Whether or not trains can move on their own is really unclear, because his drivers couldn't make Henry move out of the tunnel, but then there's another episode where Thomas goes off on his own one morning without a driver, and he can't stop, so he just plows into someone's house. Anywho, if it wasn't bad enough that Henry's been bricked into his own mausoleum, those sick bastards that bricked him in saw fit to leave him with a viewing window, so that Henry could see the outside world and all of his other friends happily sailing by. And then the final narration notes... And I think he deserves his punishment. Don't you? Taking a sharp left turn off this rant, eagle-eyed viewers of the show may have recognised Ringo Starr's name in the credits as the narrator. Good for you, Ringo. Sometimes you got to stick out those shit jobs while you wait for better things. Just think, if it hadn't been for all that time spent toiling away, he may never have got his dream job in Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. And while we're peeking back behind the curtain, have you ever been watching an episode of Thomas and Friends, looked up at the sky and realised that the clouds were not moving? This was the case for at least one person, because apparently the creators of the show had complaints that the clouds were not moving. Like, nope, that's it, I'm out. The clouds are not moving across the sky. This has completely ruined my suspension of disbelief. The fourth wall has been broken. How can I possibly enjoy the show about talking trains when there are clouds in the background blatantly not moving? There's a lot of messed up things in Thomas the Tank Engine, but one in particular that stands out to me is the fable of Smudger. Now, Smudger, he's a bit of a dick. There's no other way to put it. This guy deliberately derailed himself because he didn't want to be helpful. Like, who does that? That would be like you stopping what you're doing halfway through work one day and saying, you know what? No, I don't want to contribute today. And you're just throwing yourself down a flight of stairs. Now, clearly this boy needs talking to. So what do you think the fat controller does? For those of you who didn't watch the show, he's the guy who runs the railway. But also, if you didn't watch the show, then why are you watching this? Anyway, so what do you think the fat controller does? Does he sit him down and give him a stern talking to? No, he takes off his wheels and he turns him into a generator. Imagine a month or two later a train comes to visit and they're like, Hey, whatever happened to that smudger guy? Ah, oh, well, we turned him into a generator. What? Yeah, he's behind the shed. You know where we sleep? Yeah, we can still hear him at night. He reminds us not to misbehave. And just in case you thought, well, you know what? Maybe after a while when he's proven he's sorry, then the fat controller might take him back like he did with Henry, right? Yeah, nah. But this time, it's not the fat controller that's dishing out the cruel and unusual punishment. This time it was the economy kicking Smudger while he's down. The particular railroad that Smudger worked on was closed because it went bankrupt. And just in case that wasn't enough, the universe decided to step in as well and 
the shed that Smudger was in, whoosh, buried by a landslide. And before you say, oh, I feel sorry for poor Smudger. Well, that makes you the only one, because you know what? There was a rescue effort put in to save the trains that were in the shed buried by the landslide. But not Smudger. No, fuck that guy. Frighteningly, this isn't a one-off. There is a theme of cannibalizing people who misbehave. Now, look, if you listened to my last video, Willy Wonka, Slavery and Homicide, links in the description below, then you will know that I am against enslaving people. But at least when the Fat Controller is sentencing his engines to these horrible fates, I mean, it kind of makes sense. He's the Fat Controller, he owns the railway, and weirdly, I guess, also these sentient trains. But Fatty's totalitarian reign doesn't stop there. Buses, boats, it's open season. Anyone who misbehaves, if you even have one off day and you're rude to one person, your fate is on the line. Bulgy, a double-decker bus, he drove recklessly and he hit the bottom of the bridge, so they turned him into a hen house. Bullstrode the barge. I don't even remember what he did, but I remember him being unlikable. So Percy drops an entire train full of loaded trucks onto Bullstrode from about three stories up. If you think that's where Bullstrode's punishment ends, then clearly you haven't been paying attention in this video. Rather than just leaving Bullstrode on the bottom of the sea floor underneath all that rubble, they pull him up out of the water and dump him on a beach so that, quote, children can play on him. I wish I could say that the horrors on the island of Sodor end with the Fat Controller's tyrannical reign, but there is another level of creepiness going on here. I'm talking about genuine paranormal activity going on on the island. Let me read you this quote from the show. A long time ago, a little engine was returning home. It was a misty, moonlit night as the engine crossed the great iron bridge. Suddenly, the engine lost control and plunged over the side into the swamps below. He was never found again. But many a workman will tell you, when the moon is full, they have seen the little engine trying to return home, but he never makes it. This isn't a quote from some H.P. Lovecraft novel. This is Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. There is a powerful dark magic going on on this island, so much so that it seems to have seeped into the land itself. Remember that landslide from before? I don't. Clearly I rant a lot, because I have no memory of a landslide. <laughs> oh yeah, the one that tombed in Smudger. Anywho, remember that landslide from before, the one that entombed all those engines in that shed? Man, there is a weird theme of entombment going on in this series. Anyway, it's almost like the land itself had it out for these engines. And if you thought that, you wouldn't be wrong. In the episode ominously titled Rusty and the Boulder, a sentient boulder chases an engine around the island, kind of like that scene from Indiana Jones where he runs away from the boulder, only replace Indy with a train and replace the boulder with a boulder that has a face. That's right, the boulder has a face. Anyway, that is where we're going to leave that today. I think I have sufficiently torn apart my childhood enough. And on the subject of tearing apart my childhood, we're going to slide right on into the letter segment. Today's mail comes to us from Karen at National Bank. Karen says, Hi Craig. Thinking about buying or selling your own home? Then come on in and see us about it, one of our great home loan deals. Hi Karen. Thanks for writing in. I'm going to go ahead and not do that, because although my bank account has many zeros in it, unfortunately the first digit is a minus. If you've got any questions you want answered, or any suggestions for next week's topic, then chuck a comment down in the comment section below. Just chuck it right on in there. Chuck it in nice and snug. Chuck it in so deep that whoever pulls it out will be crowned the new king of England. That's all we've got time for this week. Oh, this week. Wow. <laughs> Someone's optimistic about how quickly he can push out videos. That's all we've got time for today. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram. I didn't want to get us an Instagram, but my friends told me that Facebook's a dying media. And to that I say, aren't we all? Make sure to check out my other videos and leave a like on this one. Subscribe. Follow us on all those things that I just mentioned. And you do you. Live your life. Catch you later. I've been Craig, and you've been listening to Too Ugly for Radio. Peace.